We now travel to Armenia. We step foot to this particular monastery where a monk's praying to Mama Mary that this movie will not suck. He's praying hard, but sadly his prayers would be unanswered. He finishes praying, puts on his hood and exits the monastery. When suddenly the major just waltzes in, says she's the head of Patriot now. Lur whips out some serious earth-bending prowess and says he's still kind of pissed on how he was used as a guinea pig back in the Patriot program. The major promises revenge and she busts out the whole Professor Ovgus is still alive and just like that, well, he's in. Traveling to Kazakhstan. We're taken to the dirtiest place there, the Aral Sea. This ninja guy hangs around, but these technicals come for him. Let's go into some slow-mo and there they are. His super edge lord swords are brandished while these men prepare to fire. He breathes in and teleports behind a truck like Cold Steel the Hedgehog. Nothing personal, kid. The other technicals open fire, but he's just too edgy for him. And like my boy Ramsey, he lets the knives do the work. In a matter of seconds, they're all decimated. Lur confronts Khan, the Reaper main. Then Lur offers him to join in this pursuit for Kuratov's head. Looks like he's in too. Up next on the hunt is in Siberia. We're taken to this woodland valley where soldiers approach a log cabin with caution. They enter said cabin and find a lot of bubbly science equipment. It's all dandy until this guy's thrown off a roof. Enter Arsis, the strongest furry in the world. Outside, Major L and Lur and Khan greet him. Let's head back to Moscow, where we're gonna watch the greatest show on Earth, The Circus. This beautiful lady makes a big standing ovation in front of a massive crowd. Then she takes a high dive to a pool. Inside, she perfectly blends in with the water and becomes almost invisible. Confetti's raining from the skies as she rises, and the crowd's clapping once again for her. Her show's done. And as she's dressing down, the creeper known as Lur surprises her. They get into some kung fu action. This lovely lady doesn't know who Khan is, but he says if he brought flowers, would she have not thrown fists in his face? Well, the little lady insists on talking with violence, so she throws Khan a table this time. Luckily, Lur's there to save it with a beautiful rose. He says they're all old friends of hers, but this girl had one thing on her mind, brawling. She tussles with Lur, and then Khan argues who taught the girl which move. Well, Arsis isn't really a small talk kind of guy since he's a furry and calls her by her name, Xenia. He gets right into it and grills her by telling her that she's a loner with superpowers with no friends. And then he name drops all of them and offers to take revenge on whoever did this to him. Looks like she said yes, and she's in. Let's go back to the main baddie, where he relishes at his work, saying that he's waited 50 years for this clone army plan, and now no one can stop him. Back at Guardian's headquarters, Xenia recalls the events of when she lost her memories and all she had was her ring. She said the doctors reassured her that her memories would eventually come back, which, spoiler alert, it didn't happen. She said her superpowers include eternal youth, can turn invisible and into water, highly resistant to temperature effects, and she can also control her own body temperature. And she makes a borscht to die for. She agrees to work with the Guardians since they have nothing else going on. I don't fear and a moment later, a military officer comes by, saying they're able to track Kuratov's location. They're gonna take this chance, because they have the element of surprise. Let's head over to some desolate landscape filled with rubble and ruins of buildings. The place is crawling with sus-looking mercenaries patrolling the area. The Guardians are hidden from sight, and somewhere here lies Kuratov's command center. They get moving, and Lur tries to contact Elena, but there's a massive signal interruption, so it's furry time. Arsis gets in his suit, while the rest of them take their position in shrouded rain, rubble, and ruin. With the stealth of her invisibility, Xenia slips past the guards, but one spots her with a thermal vision visor. They shoot conveniently placed liquid nitrogen pipes and she freezes, while well, their cover's blown. So Arsis goes ham, and so does Khan with those small ninja swords. Lur stands up to some serious earth bending, then eventually covers himself in full rock armor. Arsis smashes some heads and Khan unleashes his inner Shadow the Hedgehog. Elena and Commander desperately trying to get the signal back up as the Guardians are pulling out all the stops. That's until Khan gets tranked and Arsis is netted like a dog. Of course, Xenia's still frozen and Lur is left at full capacity. There, he finally faces Dr. Kuratov. Lur throws a few rocks, but Kuratov just takes it like a champ and smashes him into a wall, instantly crushing the armor. He tries to get up and boulder bash him, but he just turns his rocks into sand with a powerful blow. Then Kuratov totally pulls a bane and breaks his back. 
Back at Dr. Kuratov's psycho lab, the Guardians are imprisoned behind a force field. Then the Quack gives him a visit. Kuratov scoffs that they mounted an assault against them, but he knows of all their weaknesses, since he was responsible for their powers. Arsis suddenly pleads to let Xenia go because she didn't remember anything from the Guardians' initiative. Ursan says they're kept alive because Kuratov plans to siphon their power, so he prepares a good stabbing just in case. Kuratov also has one more reason for keeping him alive. To join him. He says they can unlock their full potential, but for some reason they don't want any part of his evil schemes. He gives him 24 hours, but even by then he already has his full clone army. Kuratov then steps outside looking at his base's glorious preparation, and then he uses electrical powers to make the T-90s form a full Tiananmen tank column. Breaking news, that was apparently a massive tank robbery from the Bakanur Cosmodrome. Soon, a lot of news media picks up Red Alert 2-styled invasion that's headed for Moscow. Tanks, drones, MLRSs, BMPs, you name it, it's probably there. Cities are being evacuated, and downtown Moscow has suffered a tragic mechanized massacre. Soon, Elena and the Special Forces find Lur's unconscious body at the Baikonur Cosmodrome Launch Center. The same military officer from before visits Kuratov. He says he delivered his side of the bargain, and delivered the Guardians also. But the officer also says the invasion won't get out of control, but... War starts with control always being thrown out. Kuratov Tower. Kuratov chokes the life out of him in an anticlimactic scene. Then something topples the Baikonur launch tower. Apparently, it's gently placed down by those helicopters. At the Guardian's HQ, Elena attends to a freshly awakened Lur, and he says he saw his daughter when he got knocked out by Kuratov. Well, I guess he should be getting knocked out more often to keep seeing his daughter. Cue sad music. <laughs> Because there he goes, rambling about his daughter that nobody probably cares about, and then he falls right back to sleep. A staff member comes in to interrupt this emotionally crucial moment, stating that there's a professor that has come here since he used to work here. The old coot sprung into action once he saw Kuratov, and Elena states that every one of the Guardians but Lur has been held captive. The professor then points out a location of an old lab he thinks Kuratov will go to. And this time they'll really have the element of surprise because Kuratov doesn't know he's alive. Surprise, surprise. Special Ops team and Elena go into the place snitched out. And it turns out to be Kuratov's main laboratory. Elena takes out the guards, but at the same time, the professor back at the Guardians' base is doing some tomfoolery to lure while he's sleeping. Elena and the Spec Op team free the Guardians from their electromagnetic prison. Then we see Kuratov's armies carrying the Baikonur Tower across town. At home base, Arsis is awake talking to Elena about the professor from earlier who was actually one of Kuratov's clones. Man, professor's playing 4D chess with these idiots. Then he goes into a sob story on how his fury transformations are becoming more and more difficult and harder to control. He's afraid he might be stuck being a furry forever, so he needs someone knowledgeable to help him out with this whole ordeal, and then Elena vows to do whatever she can to help. Arsis gives thanks and walks out. At Kuratov's lab, there's the clone professor, and they have a little reunion. Kuratov accuses him of betrayal, and he says there's no going back for him. He wants the whole world to know that he's a genius, so instead of going for that Nobel Peace Prize, he zaps and gasses that clone professor to his end. Somewhere in the city, the Baikonur Tower is erected, and standing on top of it is none other than Professor Kuratov, looking like he's ready to set up the scene for villainous monologue. He goes ahead and electrically powers the entire tower. Let's go into orbit for a second and take a look at this ship that was activated. At the control room of the Guardians' base, there's a call for Elena, and it's the leader of the space station. The Guardians are brought into this meeting, and they say that a Cold War era space station called the Hammer has a devastating cannon that can obliterate any city on Earth. Now, Kuratov won't stop there. He also plans to control all of Earth's satellites, bouncing that signal everywhere and basically dominating every machine on the planet. Ars is thinking that Baikonur Tower isn't tall enough to do this evil plan, but they found out he erected the tower on top of another one, so now they have a big problem. Some MIGs go to scout the tower Kuratov made, but the drones guarding it are at the ready and fire several volleys of anti-air weapons. A force field is also shielding the tower from other attacks. Just like that, the attacking air force is no more. Khan is overlooking the air force being absolutely decimated by Kuratov's machines. And then he rants to Elena about being jealous of his brother. And that's why he allowed Kuratov to experiment on him. See, according to him, he wanted to beat his brother, but he accidentally put him six feet under. 
Elena apologizes for this loss. Sleek and high-tech suits that the facility scientists made for the Guardians so to extend their powers and durability. Each one is uniquely made, except for Arsis, but he gets a devastating automatic weapon system instead. Khan puts on his suit for a dry run, then Lur tests him. His suit is tactical… rocks on it, yeah? He'll never run out of rocks, and not to mention he can use an electromagnetic rock whip because… science. And Xenia's suit, it becomes invisible with her, and if she touches other objects, they disappear as well. Arsis tests his bodily fluids, Khan brandishes his sword, and Lur has a bit of trouble with the whip. With the suit, Khan can slice and dice at the blink of an eye. Xenia goes to full sparring mode while being invisible from time to time. Lur finally gets the hang of the whip and starts ripping apart the training dummies. Soon, they're all seen training together. So, Guardians, assemble. Back to Dr. Quack and his Russian Space Needle, he amplifies that signal and finally makes the hammer deploy. Arsis says they have an hour, so they make a plan to attack from all sides. They also get a keycard to temporarily disable the force field. Then they have to disable the module in the tower. Then the Soviet military will bomb into Stalin's grave. Military sets up for a bombing phase. Then the Guardians move in on the city. Lur takes the underground parking while Arsis and Xenia take the fight to the streets. Khan's on a plane waiting for that parrot drop, while Arsis lets the lead fly. The plane Khan's in is getting shot, so the bad CGI of Arsis going full man mode takes over. Soon, he becomes full bear and raids the rest of the soldiers and the terror drone. Lur gets the drop on all the guards in the parking lot and gets one key card. The same goes for Arsis and Xenia, so they all meet up with Lur at the elevator. At Kuratov's old lab, Elena discovers the old professor is still kicking. The rest of the guardians reach almost the top of the tower, and they see Khan's plane is getting attacked. They want to assist them by crossing a thin wire, but they're shot at. Seeing this, Khan takes the leap of faith. He grapples the tower and slices the wire that the enemies were on. The Guardians are now fully assembled. Back to Elena, preparing for a deuce ex machina. Because the professor says the Guardians have a hidden superpower that is obscenely strong and can only be accessed when they merge together. It's also high risk, high reward. Because if they screw it up, they can all meet Lenin six feet under. It's more to beat you. Back at the Russian Stark Tower, Xenia and Khan are taking out the guards and finally make it to the brightly glowing blue module. Xenia says that it's the generator, and they need to blow it up to stop Kuratov's evil plan. She's suggesting shorting the circuits out, but Khan says that heat could melt any metal. Xenia makes the genius decision of using her own body. Then the force field fluctuates. Kuratov notices this. Then Arsis rescues Xenia from her own stupid decision. The control team celebrates prematurely, and then Kuratov braces himself. The Guardians check on their idiotic invisible friend and she's alright. The military's about to bomb this place, but Elena suggests that the Guardians are still here, so she's begging for more time. Arsis and company reach the top, and it's final boss time. Arsis is immediately knocked out. Lur and Khan are swept aside, but Xenia helps Lur up. He whips the daylights out of Kuratov, then Khan brandishing swords, but Kuratov breaks free. He goes for Xenia, but Arsis goes full bear once again. Then he and Kuratov charge at each other, only for him to be knocked out. Again, the military makes up their minds, and it's bombing time, so Elena storms out. Seeing the escape plane, Khan hooks to the plane and ropes his teammates to safety. Then the missiles rain. Kuratov tries to send the Guardians' his plane crashing, but Khan slices him free and they land on a river instead. Unfortunately, the plane goes fully September. A biker comes to the location where the Guardians made their big splash. Then we see him surfacing out of the water. Lur says they need to get back up there, but Elena the biker says an apocalyptic strike is coming to decimate the tower. Kuratov just easily deflects the few missiles that were sent and thinks they're all stupid. At orbit, the hammer satellite prepares to fire. Elena then tells him about their secret Power Ranger skills. And then they charge a massive beam that takes two episodes to fire. The beam goes out and the shockwave destroys all the massive buildings in the city. And because of this, the hammer satellite is shut down and Kuratov falls to his defeat. The Guardians take their well-deserved sleep after their power of friendship and then the news reports on the aftermath of the incident. Moscow slowly reconstructing. Then the Guardians and Elena take a heroic look at the city. Elena then talks about the power of friendship, and then Xenia remembers some of her past. Before the Guardians were about to leave, they tell Elena they'll see each other again in the next Avengers level threat. And then she spills that they found more Guardians. So, hit those launch buttons, people, cause that's it for the Guardians. What'd you think about this strong movie, comrade? 
Why don't you let us know in those comments below with the hashtag cinema recap. This was The Guardians by Enjoy Movies, starring Anton Pampushny, Sanjar Mahdi, and Sebastian Sisek. Until then, next Guardians initiative, does vidanya.